Praise the Lord. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is your program, Living by the Word. And of course, I'm your truly Pastor Eleni Signs of Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries. I want to wish you a very merry, merry, merry Christmas 2023. May all that you wish yourself and more come to pass in this season of joy, this season of love, this season of giving. And most importantly, I pray that you would know, if you don't know yet, the, the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ, the one who was born to save us, the one who was born to die, the one who came and conquered death, hell and the grave and has given us power and victory over sin and death. I pray God this Christmas seasons bring with it all the blessings that God has for you and so much more as we wrap up 2023 together and look forward to what God has in store for us for 2024. Amen. So on behalf of my own self, I know on behalf of the Tobago Inspirational Network, on behalf of Destiny and Empowerment Global Ministries, and I'm taking the liberty of saying, on behalf of the pastors and ministers you see here, we do wish you a really awesome, awesome, and a very merry Christmas 2023. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for even this day that you have made mighty God that we can rejoice. We can be glad in it. We are alive to see this day. There has never been a day like this and there will never be like day, a day like this again. May all the goodness and all the mercies that you have for us this day, Father, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And may we be people that will keep our hearts glad and grateful to you for what you have done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to us, continue talking to us. I know it's Christmas, but I don't want to break the flow. I want to talk to us about the spirit of offense. <clears throat> This is the third, um, third part of the series and the third and final part dealing with the spirit of offense. And let me say this to you, even in this Christmas season of giving and visiting and paranging, it is very possible that you will be offended by something somebody did or does or didn't do or you think they should have done as families are home, children are home, um, you know, people are coming and relatives are traveling and connecting. And my God, there's, there's something that can happen in the midst of the celebrations. I'm warning you even now, there are things that can happen in the midst of the celebration that can cause offense and can ruin your entire Christmas season, your entire vacation. I'm putting you on the alert. Jesus said about offense in Luke chapter 17 from verse 1. He said then, he said to his disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It is impossible, but that offenses will come and one little offense can ruin your entire Christmas holiday. I'm saying my brother, my sister, be on the alert. So what is offense? I'm telling you again, as I continue, that offense means annoyance or resentment that's brought about by a perceived insult or disregard for oneself. It is taking something personally. It is having your feelings hurt or wounded. It's to become angry or upset by something that another person has said or done. My God, you're all up in your feelings about what somebody has done or what you perceive somebody has done or should have done. I'm telling you this. A spirit of offense is feeling resentful because of an actual or perceived insult. Because we can be offended by things that we think people have done and they don't even have a clue. My God, that they have done this thing to insult us. Sometimes it is an actual insult and other times it is an unintended slight. My God, that we misinterpret oftentimes judging people from our own misconceptions, our own faulty perceptions, our own, you know, issues that we are carrying around. My God, hear what the Greek word I said for offense is scandalizo which means to be caught in a trap. 
when you are offended you are caught in the enemy's trap i said last time that the enemy is a hunter we understand that he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and one of the strategies that he uses is to bring offense our god because when you are offended one of the words mean that you fall away you begin to pull away there are some of you will not gather with family this christmas because you've been offended come on there are some of you you will show up at the Christmas table, the Christmas dinner, but you're going to pull by yourself. You're grumbling even now because something has happened that has brought offense, has called you to fall away and have brought you to the place of being caught in a trap. Offense steals your joy. Offense steals your peace. Offense is the seed of bitterness. It's the seed of anger. It's the seed of resentment. It's the seed of hurt. It's the seed of betrayal. It's the seed of vengeance and even murder. And I will show you where the Lord dropped something on my spirit and blew my mind with this message of offense. Let me say this. Why do we get offended? We get offended because we have some self-issue offense has to do with self it starts with us how we perceive what others have done to us and oftentimes it is because of past hurts or some kind of mental processing lack of feeling worthy or having some kind of concept about ourselves that we are ready to take offense the second reason that we get offended is when we think sometimes too highly of ourselves or of other people we get offended because we felt this person, you know, should have given me this or I should have gotten that or this person who is in position, my God, and feel that, you know, they, I, I, I asked them for an autograph and they didn't sign my autograph. Who we think he is, who she thinks she is, they reach now. People like to tell you you're rich. They get offended because you might be able, you might be in a situation and they're asking you for something and they say, no, I can't do it now. They get offended. They may come up to you and say, I want a picture taken. I say, right now, I can't take a picture with you. The person might be running to an emergency. You don't concern that. My God, you think highly of this person and this person is supposed to. And you get offended. The third reason we get offended is because we have some unrealistic and unmet expectation. And I give the example of Naaman. When he was told to go and wash in the river Jordan, he said no, he thought the prophet would have come out and he would have said this and he would have said that and he, there are better rivers to wash it. He got offended because we have expectation of others. Those expectations are not met and we get offended. The fourth reason we get offended is because we are always ready to give a negative intent to people's actions. Until you ask persons why they did what they did, you will never fully understand. But we see persons behave in a certain way and we ascribe negative intent to their actions. So we are ready to say, you know, maybe you are in a church and they are serving um, a meal. Yes, they're serving a meal. And when they get to you, my God, the sister or the person serving might not have given you a certain thing in your plate. Right? And before you stop and say, hey, look, you missed me. You know, you're ready to say, well, you see, if for so and so, they would have give them. And you take offense. Because you are ready to ascribe a negative intention to the person's actions. Maybe the person just did not see you. Come on, somebody. So what are the remedies for offense? And this is where I stopped last time. I said the first remedy for offense is expect offense to come. Jesus said it's impossible for offense not to come. It's impossible once you live in this world. My God, once you have feelings, once you're interacting with people, situations will come that will make your feelings hurt that will cause disappointment my god that will cause you to, to feel a how to take things personally even though it's not intended expect offenses to come you are not immune it doesn't matter what your position in the church in the family expect offenses to come on your job offenses will come
As you interact with general population, offense will come. If you're a parent, offenses will come. My God, if you're a child, offenses will come. It doesn't matter, you're a student, you're a teacher, you're a businessman, a politician, you're a father, offenses will come. So when you expect it and it happens, you will not think it's strange. My God, why is this happening to me? If it was so and so, it wouldn't happen to them. Yes, they too will face situations that will cause them to feel offended. The second thing I want to say to us about dealing with offenses, don't readily assume negatively about other person's intentions. The Bible tells us that love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us, love does not think evil. I want you to understand this. Before we are ready to say, you see, this is why they did it. The Bible says, if you're walking in love, and it says, this is how we know that we are his disciples. If we have love one for the other, if we are walking in perfect love, when something happens, we are not ready to jump to a negative conclusion because love does not readily think evil. Find a way to think. You know what? Give the person the benefit of the doubt. Come on. They pass you straight. And you are ready to say, you know what? It's because I had a fallout or because I said something. Maybe touch the person and say, hey, did you see me? That person might not even have seen you. And they have passed and you're ready to take offense and say, you see, it's because of this and it's because of that and it's because. No. Ask a question. Come on. In fact, hear what the Bible says in Matthew 18, 15 to 17. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you, go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. What am I saying? If you feel offended by something somebody does, go to the person privately. I said last time that I had a situation with someone who decided I will go on a chat and plasma you on a chat. Come on, somebody. Because something you did unknowingly offended me. I'm saying Facebook is not the option. Instagram is not the option. Social media, if you're a child of God and somebody does something to offend you, is not the option. Go to the person, especially if that person is a brother or sister, because you would want to know that if you have offended somebody, that they, are, they have come to you to say something. That's what we say. We said you could have come and asked for something. Come on. So go to the person. The Bible also tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that a brother has aught against you, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and give thy gift. God is saying, I prefer reconciliation than gift. God wants to see us living in harmony. God is more concerned about how we treat each other and live with each other than your gift. God ain't hungry for our gift if we're not living right. My God, if we're not walking right, if we're not talking right with each other. God says, fix that and then bring your gift and come. The third thing I want to tell you about dealing with offense. So first, expect offense to come. Secondly, do not just, you know, assume negative intentions about people's actions. Go to them. Have a conversation. Thirdly, be willing to forgive. Now, this is hard. I tell you, it is hard. Because if somebody has hurt or offended you, my God, we hold on to that offense. We hold on to that hurt. And my God, we feel as though, you know, we're doing the person something. But as I heard somebody say, oh, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Come on. 
Somebody said unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hope the next person dies. Unforgiveness, our God, causes bitterness to arise. It is a seed of bitterness. It is a seed of all kinds of other medical issues. It's a, it's a seed that blocks your blessing. It's a seed that hinders your prayer life, hinders fellowship with each other, and hinders fellowship with God. Let me say that. Matthew 6, 12, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. You forgive us as we have forgiven our debtors because we do have debtors, but we are also debtors to God. Come on. So if we want God's forgiveness, my God, we have to remember that we also have to forgive others. Matthew 6, 15, 14 to 15 says, For if you forgive not men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He says, as many as seven times, Jesus said unto him, I do not say to you seven times. But 70 times, seven times. He says unlimited forgiveness. Forgiveness is supposed to be the lifestyle of every believer in Jesus Christ. Because we are always in need of forgiveness from God. You understand? Hallelujah. There's never a time when we mess up ah, and we go before God and we say, God, I'm sorry. That God says, okay, I forgive you the last hundred times. Don't come back. My God, the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness towards us. Great is God's faithfulness that if we confess our sin, John says, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is faithful to forgive. And we ought to be like him in that regard. Hear what the Bible says. There's a parable of the unforgiving debtor. In Matthew 18, 21, 35, my God, it says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how much shall I forgive? Verse 23 says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay. You know, the king is God talking about, Jesus talking about God. So he couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owed to pay the debt. The king is saying, you owe me millions of dollars. I'm going to sell your family to pay the debt. What does the man do? The Bible says in verse 26, the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me. I will pay it all. Then the master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. The master had pity. My God, the Bible says in verse 28, but when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. Ah, oh my God, my God, my God. Let me say this to us people. Oh my God, listen, whatever people owe us, hey, whatever debt people owe us is nothing compared to what we owe God. Hallelujah. Whatever people have done to us is nothing compared to what we have done to God. Ah, oh God, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Ah, oh God, we are accustomed to doing our own thing. And God laid a reproach. God laid it on Jesus. God sent his son to die for us. My God, what other debt that we owe God? We cannot pay God. He himself paid the debt for himself that we could not pay he says this man owed him a thousands of dollars amen a few thousand dollars he grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment his fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time just like he begged be patient with me, I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. Sometimes we just forget what God has done for us when we deal with people. Come on, somebody. 
when some of the other servants saw this they were very upset they went to the king and told him everything that happened then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said you evil servant I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me you see what God called him evil servant my God, shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? If I am the king and I can forgive you, should not you forgive each other? My God, then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do, Jesus said to you, if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. My God, this is a hard scripture. Jesus said, this is what God will do. Daddy, we love you. Daddy, we praise you. Jesus said, if we do not forgive from the heart, this is what God will do to you. Forgive, we have to forgive. We got to release people. My God, sometimes it's hard, but we got to release them. Colossians 3.13 says, bearing with one another. If one has a complaint against another, forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you so you must also forgive if you can give yourself one gift this Christmas is the gift of forgiveness my God if you can give yourself one gift today as you look at us on Christmas day or whenever in the season of giving let us give forgiveness Let's release people. Don't go into the new year with all the baggage of who did this and your mother did that and your... Let's drop it. Amen. Let's drop it. And I want us to understand a big part of forgiveness. I'm going to give you this scripture. My God. Romans 12, 17 to 19 is a verse that has helped me. Romans 12. It says, repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all who offend you. you. You do your part. My God. Beloved, he says, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. He says, I will repay. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is not yours. And I'm saying this because the writer says, leave it to the wrath of God. They are not going to get away. They will face the wrath of God. God says, I am not going to allow them to treat you anyhow and not have to pay for it. God says, the wrath of God will deal with that. Vengeance is his. Vengeance is not ours. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2.23. 1 Peter 2.23. I'm talking about forgiveness. He did not, Jesus, when everything he faced, the Bible says he did not retaliate. When we are offended, we want to retaliate. We want to get evil. We want to do this. Jesus, the Bible says our pattern is Jesus. He did not retaliate when he was insulted nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. I'm saying to you, my sister, my brother, leave that thing in God's hand. Leave that thing in God's hand. God can avenge you better than you can avenge yourselves. The people who do you wrong, they don't get away. I'm saying to you, do not dirty your hand for nobody. Whether in the natural or in the spiritual. My God, don't sit down and plan evil. Well, you see, when they come this Christmas, I'm not cooking nothing. I'm not serving this one. He says, leave it to God. Leave it to God. My God. I want to finish this message, but my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The last thing I want to say, the fourth thing I want to say to you, don't take offense. Remember, it's a trap. We can only be offended if we take offense. My God. Hear what Ecclesiastes 7, 20, 21 to 22 says. Do not take to heart all the things that people say lest you hear your servant cursing you 
Your heart knows that many times you yourself has cursed others. Come on. When we are offended, we behave as, oh, we are the victim. Oh, how can this person do this? How can this person say this? But we know we ourselves have been, hello, we have been the one that have cursed other people. We have been the one that have laughed and mocked other people. We have been the offender, my God. Not just the offended. Don't play victim. The, the writer says, you know, you yourself have been guilty of doing what others have done to you. My God. Proverbs 19, 11 says, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking an offense. We don't have to take it to heart. Fight everybody. Jump down. Overlook it. Small thing. What if your feelings get hurt? So what? Look at what they did to Jesus. They pierced him. They nailed him to the cross. My goodness, they spat upon him. They put a crown of thorns upon his head. The baby Jesus we celebrate. Take pattern from him. He says, overlook it. Don't take offense. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. He says, always be humble. Be gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults because of your love let me tell you something people are human beings we mess up we do crazy things we we, we have the slip of the tongue we we are a mess we live in a fallen world he says you make allowances for each other's faults understand that we are not perfect people Understand we will do some things sometime that we are human. Sorry to say. I'm not using this as an excuse. But because we are in this fallen nature, my God, things will happen that we did not intend to happen. He says, make allowances for other people's faults. We are not perfect is what he's saying. Make allowances for it. Amen. I want to give you the one last one as we wrap up today. We have just about a minute or so. The fifth thing I want to say to you dealing with offense, don't be too quick to run to other people for counsel. The Lord dropped this thing in and it blew my mind. And he gave me the, the situation of Esther. Esther and Mordecai with Haman. Amen. What happened is that when Haman would come out by the gate, Haman was one of the officers for the king. He would see the other people bowing down to him, but Mordecai did not bow. Haman took offense. The Bible says Haman went to his wife and his friends and told them about this man that took offense, that, that would not bow because he came at the gate and everybody was bowing. His friends told him, go and make this hangman, go and set up this gallows to destroy Mordecai. My God, do you know what happened to Haman in the end? In the end of his life, when the king thought that he had fallen on Queen Esther, begging her for his life, the king took him and hung him on the same he had set up. I am saying to you, be very careful about running to other people to complain and take advice. If it's not godly counsel, leave it alone. Vent, but I'm saying to you, pray. Don't be too ready to run for advice because the advice the people might give you, my God, it may work for them, but you may be hung in the very noose you are certain to get revenge on other people. Leave it to God. Amen? Now, of course, this is all the time you have for living by the word. I want to encourage you this Christmas to live the word, love the word, learn the word. Till next time, say sure. God bless you. Pastor Heinz say bye-bye.